<laughs> See? <laughs> See? He's real as fuck. <laughs> but... Synopsis, go. Come on. Well, we Fast. have to do go. the intro, Fee. Yeah, we no, we have to skip that. We don't have time now. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> we went Sanguinius the Great Angel. The book about Sanguinius from the from from Warhammer Forty Thousand. Uh, technically, this is Warhammer Horus Heresy, but that's all, that's semantics. Um, well, the Hor the Horus Heresy hasn't happened yet. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the book he actually mentions that it happens within a couple months. Yeah, like it, it it's it's right on the cusp. It's yeah, getting close. We're we're getting cheeked up. We're getting sat down strapping ourselves in about to commit some Horus heresy um but that's not what this book is about this book is about sanguinius the primarch of the blood angels if you remember last year we did uh conrad kurz the night haunter he's also a primarch do uh, love my trash daddy this one's a little different uh this book follows Cartenia. See, I remembered this. I didn't need anyone to tell me his Remember name. Remember the Remembrancer. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's a Remembrancer, which is just a, a space space journalist. And at the beginning of the book, he's like, damn, I really got myself into a pickle. People seemed to pay a lot of attention to the book I wrote last time, which was about how the, the Space Wolves the night lords and the world eaters are committing war crimes uh particularly war crimes for fun like they're do they're 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 it's not like an accident they're not like oops i accidentally dropped this white phosphorus on this village they're it's like, more like hey wouldn't it be funny if i dropped this white phosphorus <laughs> <Yeah>. on them <laughs> uh Rubber. which not so Rubber. much the 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 world eater or the space wolves that's more like, what if I saw how far I could throw this surf off of this cliff for fun? Um, but he's like, damn, I'm surprised I got a new job. A new gig uh, working for the Ninth Legion, the Blood Angels. I wonder what this is going to be like. I hope no one brings up what I, what I wrote previously because... The first thing they do. <laughs> yeah, and that's the first thing everyone does. Uh, he meets this lady, um, her name I don't remember. I remembered Caltenia. Cal I don't remember her name either. It's, uh, Madeira? Madeira, it's yeah. Madeira. yeah. Yep, that's her. And Madea. She, <laughs> Madea! That is not the one her name is <laughs> Madea is the one who recommended, uh, Tyler Perry, uh, portraying Madea is, is the woman that, that recommended him for the gig. She's also a remembrancer, but she's a painter. Um, and they meet up uh, before they get to the the moon, the moons of Ball, uh, where the the Blood Angels live and chill. And they're like, "Yo, what's up?" And she's like, "That book you wrote was pretty interesting. It's a good thing you're you're you've moved past all of that, right?" And he's like, "Well, um." I kind of have a job to do, right? Journalistic integrity. And she's like, mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah. Uh, and then one of the one of the key plot point, or I guess it's not like a plot point, but one of the big things that sets the Blood Angels apart is they finally get to Ball and they start seeing all the fleets, all of the ships from the, the Blood Angels fleets. And he's like, damn, these ships don't look anything like the other Space Marine ships. They're, like, literally covered in gold. In, in paintings. In sculptures. And shit like that. That's pretty wild. Um, and then what happens? Goes to the planet. He talks to a Space Marine up close. He's like, damn, this guy's huge. And he's kind of a freak. He's kind of a freak low Seven key. days a week, A.O. Yeah. But more like, this guy's kind of a mutant now that I think about it. But I guess that's not important. Uh, long story short, he ends up on the Red Tier. Does he st talk to Sanguinius while they're on the planet? 
Uh, once or twice, yeah. He talks to him on the ship, and then they go down. And then he talks to him every once in a while there, too. Is that right? Yeah. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Because he, um, he does, like, they're on the transport, and then they go to the moon. And, and they're he hangs on the, the ball for a bit. Yeah. And he's, like, talking to people. He's like, damn, this kind of radiation thing's whack. And then he looks around the planet, looks in the archive, it's talks like, to the My angel. stomach hurt. That's what everyone's he said. like, are you excited for your meeting? And he's like, what meeting? I bet everyone is ready. And everyone's like, mm. you're meeting the play, Mark. And he's like, oh, fuck. Do oh, oh, what shit, now? Oh fuck. oh, shit. Oh, fuck. What if he's a freak? <laughs> and then <laughs> and he's, he's a, a mutant. And then he's like, and then he's like, oh, he a freak seven days a week. Okay. But yeah, it, this one was kind of different from Conrad Kerr's where everyone was like, oh, no. He's supposed to be ugly, but he's not. Whereas oh, it, it was like, damn, he's he's so angelic. I know he's they call him literally, <laughs> literally, <Yeah. laughs> literally has giant angel wings that it's, like flutter gallantly behind him. It's almost like he bends reality around him. What the scallop? I have this feeling that he sees the future. His That's eyes pretty... feel so old. <laughs> um and and during his misadventures Caltenia uh gets to know the Primarch. He's a pretty chill dude. Unlike uh Medea, uh the Primarch's like I I think the direct quote is like re record freely and without fear. So the Primarch's mm -hmm. like anything you see, anything you stumble onto, go ahead and write it down. We used it's to all be, game. yeah, it's all game. Yeah. We used to be he, fucked up, but you know, we we used to be a minion, but we grew up, right? Because the Ninth Legion, the Blood Angels, used to be known as the Revenant Legion. There was something screwy with their gene seed, something a little quirked up, but no one wanted. They kept it under wraps. No one wanted to talk about it. Um, it was very hush hush, kept secret. But now the Blood Angels good. The Blood Angels are totally chill now. A-okay, solid. So just write down anything you see. You're good, you're good. And Caltenia's like, huh, that's kind of interesting. I'm sure this has no implications for the future. Or for my mental state while oh, yeah. staying around these people. Well, because he's perfectly normal, right? There's nothing going on with him. He is he's so actually, normal. The for the Imperium? Time. He's actually a pretty good dude by the Imperium standards. <laughs> Yeah, but that's by Imperium standards. And speaking of Imperium standards, while he's with the Ninth, um, they get a they get a, a mission to go um, bring bring a sector under Imperial subjugation. <laughs> <laughs> and he's that's like, "That's the nicest way." <laughs> literally, the nicest way to put it. They roll up to this this solar system. They go to the capital planet and they're like, yo, you work for us now, okay? And they're like, hmm, I don't want to. And then Sanguinius is like, I really think you should. And this goes on for, it's like a couple weeks, right? I, yeah. And then eventually Sanguinius is like, I bet I'm going to lay it on the line here. Uh, this yeah, is your last chance. chance or I will kill every single living person on this planet. <laughs> In parentheses, not a bit. In parentheses, <laughs> mad lad. Uh, in parentheses, world star, right? Isn't yeah. there a part where they're like, oh, but we should worry about, you know, the factorums they have and stuff. Make sure those are in tech. And Sanguinis is like, make sure they're not too bombed. No, he's yeah. like, he's he's not even that. He's like, don't I did I fucking stutter? Raise this bitch to yeah, the ground. Cause, oh, yeah, because... Um, because Caltenia is sitting down, sitting in on the meeting where they're discussing the very last chance that this system's getting. And Caltenia mutters to himself, like, it's everything or nothing. And Sanguinius is like, yeah. I like that quote. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty He's accurate. like, finally, someone gets it. And then Caltenia is like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> and then Caltenia manages to, they plot twist they burn the planet to the ground 
uh, Keltenia gets to go down there and watch. He gets to watch first watch hand. Watch first hand. Murdered. Yeah, he's in a. Is he in a rhino? Yep. He's in a rhino. The rhino explodes and he survives because he pisses himself and takes off, which I guess is maybe the right move in that situation. But then he falls into was... a pit. Yeah, because the um, he specifically says that everyone, the rest of the crew tried to save the vehicle, yeah. and that's how they got caught in the explosion. Yeah. Uh, he falls into basically like a sand trap, sort of, and then the space marine like jumps into the pit and literally tosses him out of the pit, crawls up, and then like picks him up like you would like a stuffed animal, and then throws him into I think a thunderhawk or something. <laughs> like, yeah, some sort of imperial flying flying vehicle. Dropship. And Keltenia's like, man, these space marines are funny looking. I don't recognize the symbology on these guys. It's a, it's a, he sees a eye within a flame on, on their, their shoulder pads. He's it's like, also like, that's kind of weird. Like they're diverting space marines, like the backbone of this operation to save little old me. Little hmm. old me? That's weird. Well, that's and cool. part of that is it's because Sanguinius yeah. kind of ordered them to. Yeah, that's mm. that's part of it. But the really weird part is he's like, these guys really aren't doing anything. They're just sitting here watching the other space marines. They're just they're just watching the fighting like I am. Haha. <laughs> How weird is that? Those space marines. This quirky eye logo. That's yeah. pretty wild. They sit down. He wanders off. They're like, whatever there's no more everything here is dead he'll be fine and so they take off again um and he's wandering around this ruined city and he's like oh my god these are people we did this to other human beings i can't believe this there's such That's violence which also is a cool parallel to that other points in the book. He's like, abominable fucking aliens. Yeah. Kill the Xeno. Destroy yeah. them all. It's different. They're, They're not us. They are different. So I can relish in this chaos kind of well, thing. It's he... just... Go ahead, sir. No, I, I was done. Uh, he also even like, you might be surprised to hear that. I don't care. I still hate Xeno. And yeah. he just like goes on like that for a bit. I thought that was funny that he even acknowledges like yeah and, and that, that's that's the that's the imperium that's that's something i want to get to in a, in a second because there's some give, cool give you guys life. a little taste there but that that shit like that's something i was excited for you guys to see and if anyone else reads it like that's that's a that's part of why i highlighted his reaction to them burning this human planet so much is because he's like Oh my god, we did this to other human beings. This is so mean, but I guess we had to because they wouldn't listen to the Imperium. And he's mm. and he's doing all this and he's like trying not to throw up from the, the smell of the dead people. And he accidentally trips and falls onto a dead person. He's like, ah! Oh no, but then he notices something weird about the dead person. It's like they got juiced <laughs> it is like they got juiced he's like what the scallop this dude's all dried up they got this like he's freaking he's from freaking uh raisin what the hell i'm yeah, sure that's it, not important hmm. yeah and then they move on <laughs> and then yeah he moves on he gets he wanders around someone finds him i believe at some point during all of this he also sees sanguinius fighting specifically mm, uh, and he's like Wow, the beautiful angel. Wow. He's like, wow, he's... Oh, my God. Iggy's being stinky. Oh, my God. Feed, pick it up for me. Pick what up? What am I... Oh, the book. Explanation. Pick it up, pick it up. So, yeah. So, he's, like, watching all this, and he's like, whoa, the Primarch's so beautiful and elegant, even as he slashes through everything. And then he, Sanguinius gets to, you know, fight humans. And it's just like, he doesn't relish in it or whatever. But then he fights the Xenos and he's like, oh, it's like an unmarred beast let out of its cage. I return. Just slashing viciously and wildly like a rabid animal. Yeah, so, um, where are we at the story? We're still on the planet? Yeah. Yeah. Like, to explain like the contrast again between 
sanguineous fighting humans. He's like, I don't really want to do this. And then fighting the Xenos. And it's like, well, oh, so a, oh, another big plot point was when he sees Sanguinius, he's like, man, it's kind of weird when he does this. It's almost like he's, he knows what's going to happen before it happens. I guess that's just Primarchs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they finish literally burning the planet to the ground. And he's like, dang, they were no survivors, huh? And they were like, well, there's a handful of people that we let live. But those are all deep within the city, within the planet. We'll get to them eventually and turn them into slaves. Don't worry about them. And then, <laughs> while this is all happening, I believe they already... Uh, either they're talking about how within the next couple of months, uh, the Admex are just going to bring... Build a manufactorums and stuff yeah. like that to the planet. We're good at that. So, they go back up to the to the red tier. The, uh, the, the Blood Angels flagship. Uh, and Kelteng <laughs> is chilling, and then he finds out, oh, uh... One of one of our space marines, one of the blood angels, got killed by these aliens on this other planet, Alec. So, we've asked Horus for for permission to uh to go to go get rid of these Xenos on Alec. Sorry. You're good. They um, did that. And then they do it. They go on a wacky adventure, and um during this. Caltenia's like, I don't feel too good. My stomach hurt. Um, and at some point, he um, twists someone's arm into letting him talk to a um, a space marine like up close, like have a conversation. And it was it was interesting for him because he was like, huh. I mean, this guy says he's a tool, but he's he's pretty lively. He's pretty animated. And another big thing just, for him was he was, like, uh, looking around at all the stuff, and he sees, like, this bust of the Space Marine. He's like, did you do that? And the Space Marine's like, yeah. I mean, we got to train our minds and our bodies. And, and we want to look fancy, too, because we're angels. Caltenia's like, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, he points out, compared to other legions, it's a lot like, they paint and do all this art stuff to also show that despite how much of a machine they are for war, they're still kind of human on the inside. A little bit. Partially. A little. <laughs> uh, I think that Space Marine uh, also tells him that um, even though he knows eventually he's going to die one day in battle, he just wants to know <laughs> that it's like a, a good death. He He died fighting well. And Caltenia's like, that's pretty interesting. He's like a self-aware machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, ah, weird. That's pretty cool. Um, so they get to Alec, and I believe on the voyage there... Or is it the voyage back? He has several visions throughout the book, and I'm trying to remember if he has one on the way there or not. I don't remember him having one on the way there. The way there, he was, like, pretty okay. It's on the way back he starts getting a little fucky. He has a lot of dreams about Sanguinius, but he doesn't start having, like, the weird shit until the, yeah. until the uh, the they, ra they rallied to go to the bug planet. Yeah, spoiler <laughs> alert, Caltenia's some kind of a psyker. He, he, he has these visions of people that are kind of true, and I think part of it, part of his, like, his abilities is that he's able to, like not necessarily read minds but like read truth if that makes he's sense he's kind of like an empath of how i would describe it he has like an insight yeah, onto people yeah he's kind of like me um he can kind of just like read people's true emotions kind of like how i do um but yeah he has he has all these visions and dreams that make it hard for him to sleep um and so part of that uh is part of why his like his health slowly deteriorates ever since he stepped foot on ball um and every so often throughout the book someone will like like medea will run into him and she'll be like damn you don't look so good and he's like huh <laughs> that's just space living um but they get to this planet and 
they're like, damn, these bugs are really hard to kill. Um, and they're, they're just chilling, vibing. Um, and eventually he goes down to the planet to watch them fight the bugs. Um, and he's like, well, this is epic. I hate Xenos. Like, like we were saying earlier, they, they, he goes on this whole diatribe, is diatribe the right word? Monologue? Rant? He, he goes on this, this whole spiel about how aliens are bad and we should kill all the aliens and it's different from killing all the humans because humans are good and aliens are not good um and it's just really interesting to see it contrasted with his reaction to the way uh the the human planet was handled because, like we said earlier, he was like, how could we do this to other people? Um, but it was also interesting because he was like, damn, they have literally zero cares about this planet. So they're able to completely let loose. And these kind of, these, these dudes kind of act like wild animals. Almost similarly to the, the aforementioned space wolves and world eaters eyes emoji he's like huh, huh. sometimes they just kind of lose their shit and go full on berserker mode that's pretty weird they're uh, normally so like tactical and, and decorum and regal and yeah and they have a sense of decorum hmm I'm sure that has nothing to do with anything and then uh, at some point he also spies um, he spies someone watching from the ridge uh, where his transport's located at uh, but he can't quite tell, like, who is watching everything. But but he has a suspicion it's uh, the same Space Marines he ran into on the human planet they brought under uh, Imperial subjugation. But the big... He's, he's, hmm? he's actually, like, and he's looked into this guy, too. He's asked around, done right. some research, and, like... Either no one will tell him what's going on, or there's no, like, books on it, which is weird because, like, the archives are pretty expensive. There's a lot of stuff yeah. he learns that are, like, straight up not, like, for for um pro or Space Marine eyes only. Yeah, and he also, the information he has goes all the way back to, like, the founding of Ball, the, the homeworld of the Blood Angels. So he's like, something's going on here, because there's nada, there's zilch. Um, but the big main event of this fight is that there's a crack of lightning and then some space marines teleport in with white armor and it's like, oh shit, every, every, uh, every conscript and serf and soldier inside this transport is like, holy shit, it's about to go it's down. It's the white scars, we got more space marines. Phoebe was to the lunar wolves. Oh, it's so confusing because they just say, oh, white armor and top knots. It's like, that is also very easily the white scars. Yeah, but they, but they mentioned they, Horus earlier. They also mentioned Bone White, which I've only ever seen associated with the uh, Lunar Wolves. Um, I always forget Bone White's like a tan white. But at any rate, the Lunar Wolves show up and start kicking ass and they're like, let's go! And then fucking... Horace Lupercal shows up and everyone's like, whoa! And Horace is the War Master. Horace, Horace the War Master and Sanguinius the Angel are like kicking ass side by side and they're like, yeah! Kill the aliens, yeah! And I think at some point, um, I know the, the Emperor's children are on the planet too, but from what I understand. Originally, it's the Emperor's children and, um, the blood angels are right. the uh, initial forces on the planet. There's there's also a whole section about uh, titans that I thought was pretty cool, mm. but it's oh, not necessarily cool. important for the I, plot. Yeah, it's titans just are cool though, and we should talk about them. <laughs> it's literally just a section about well, these are cool big robots that we made as almost Whoa, living cool gods future. or whatever. I do. I did want to mention that kind of a little bit. The kind of the like, there's a passage very specifically where he's like. Ah, uh, yes. We could have made these walking machines of, like, total annihilation and look like anything, but we made them look like people. That's kind of fucked up. And then he's like, eh, whatever, burn the Xena. 
think you don't blink too much. I apologize <laughs> for that, y'all. He ran in and he started going ballistic. <laughs> going sicko mode. Um, so yeah, Horace, Lupercal, and Sanguinius start kicking alien ass. And everyone's losing it. Uh, Fulgrim isn't there because I don't even know if he was there. And if he was, I don't think they wanted to talk to him. Um, and then the fight's over, blah, blah, blah. They go up to Horace's flagship, the, uh, Vengeful Spirit. Yeah. And they have, like, a whole party on the Vengeful Spirit, and everyone's, like, chill. And, uh, Caltenia's watching Sanguinius and his brother talk to each other. And he's like, hmm, it's almost like Sanguinius has seen this all before. He's doing that thing again. I'm sure it's just because he's he's a Primarch. And it's also interesting how much, like, uh, Horus seems to listen to him. Almost like an advisor. An advisor who kind of already knows what's happened. I'm sure that has nothing to do with anything. Um, and I think at that point he, he does make the remark about how, like, it sure, sure does put into perspective what happens only a few months later. When Sanguinius mm. gets killed by Horus, wild. Um, because it's it's pretty like a running theme throughout a lot of the Horus Heresy novels, or how like Sanguinius is pretty much the only other Primarch Horus, and most of the other Primarchs genuinely like. Yeah, and that's, even Kurz was like, yeah, Sanguinius is I I don't hate him like the rest of them. And that's that's a that's a big part of why he was called the Great Angel is because like. No one disliked Sanguinius. He wasn't a... I think Calculator even says that in the book that, you know, why weren't you picked for the War Master? Literally, Sanguinius, right. the beloved by all. Yeah, there's there's one conversation between the two where where they, they bring that up. And Sanguinius is like, well, I, I just didn't want to do it. Um, Horus is cool, and Horus can have the job. And they were like okay uh anyways um and there was a question about like well maybe the emperor planned for all of this to happen anyway so i guess it's fine whatever caltenia is like i'm just a fucking dude i don't know <laughs> i just work here <laughs> literally he's like that seems kind of odd given the fact that everyone likes sanguinius sanguinius is like one of the best if not the best fighter He's got this weird thing where he seems like he knows what's already happened. But I just work here. Moving on. Um, so, yeah, so that happens. He watches the two brothers talk to each other. They seem really chill. Um, and then he finds his way into talking to one of the lunar wolves. A really old lunar wolf. And, like... This this dude, this character is... I think he's really funny. Because he's, like, classic, like... <sighs> old knight type character. Where he's telling you all these stories. And and he just goes on and on and on. And I, and I think that thing is just kind of funny. But he finally gets yeah. him to talk about... The, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it's really funny how, like... How constantly dealing with the blood angels being kind of assholes, but kind of not assholes, except for like one or two. And then this random ass uh, uh, lunar wolf is like, oh, what's that, Sonny? You want to hear about the war? Right. Like he can't get any information out of any of the blood angels for whatever reason. And then this fucking lunar wolf is just like, I will tell you the entire history of everything because I've seen it all and I do not care. Um... But he eventually gets him to talk about the the Blood Angels, the Ninth Legion. And he's like, oh yeah, the Revenant Legion. Those dudes are kind of fucked up. And then Caltenia is like, you mean they used to be kind of fucked up? And and the, the Lunar Wolf is like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> lunar wolf, the, the Lunar Wolf dude is just a little like lol, comma, lamau. Yeah, literally. Um, he talks about how, I forget which organ it is, but Space Marines have an organ that lets them eat <laughs> the bodies of the enemies they've killed, and they can gain memories from it. And the Lunar Wolf was like, some Space Marines... Omophagia, that's right. Yeah. 
some space marines enjoy it a little too much. You get what I mean? And Caltenia's like, no, I don't get it. And he's like, well, the the Revenant Legion really, they were really, like, all in on this thing. They really they said, liked... <laughs> the quote was like, oh, they said it was a tactical advantage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were really all in on this. And and then Caltenia's like, oh, I get it now. But they're cool now, right? They're chill. Because the Primarch fixed it, and and he he goes, I think his quote is, "What what they are now, he once was, and mm. what they once were, he will be." I believe was the direct quote, kind of hinting that, or and he also talks about how like part of the problem comes from the gene seed. The gene seed comes from the Primarch. So it's all wrapped in with within each other. He can't get rid of it because it's in him as well. And Caltenia's like, that doesn't seem quite right, but YOLO. Fuck it, we ball. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of ball, um, eventually he makes his way back to the red tier. And he's like, hmm, I sure hope that was nothing. Uh, and he's chilling. He can't sleep. He's having nightmares now, I think, about Sanguinius, if I remember correctly. Mm. Uh, and so he's like, damn, I don't know what to do. So he skitters off into the, uh, the Noctis watch of the, uh, of, of the red tier. And he's like, I'm gonna go look for that space marine I talked to, because I can't seem to find him, and no one will give me any information on him since the last battle they were in. That's kind of weird. I'll just find him directly. And he wanders around and he 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 pitter patters right up to the dude's front door. And the door's open. He's like, hmm, that's odd. But I guess he's a space marine. He doesn't exactly have to lock his doors. And he pushes the door open. And he's like, hmm, there's nothing in here anymore except for that bust that he sculpted. That's kind of weird. I missed the part earlier in the book where he's in the space marine's chambers. And he, he goes to open the door because he's like, there are more oh, yeah. sculptures in here. And the space marine like grabs him by the arm and he's like, leave. And Caltenia's like, bet, I'm leaving. Um, but this time Caltenia's like, well, I guess a, a little peek wouldn't hurt. I'm sure he's probably in there. Maybe he's stuck in the bathtub or something. <laughs> and he opens the door and he looks in. And it's effectively like a small hallway with more busts. And he's looking at all of these busts, and he's like, wow, this is really good. It's the same space marine, but he looks really angry. And he looks at the next one, he's like, okay, he looks kind of really angry. And he goes to the next one, and he's like, hmm, the, the canines on this one are really pronounced. And he goes <laughs> to the next one, he's like, he sculpted froth at the at the mouth the mouth is frothing and eventually he he works his way down to a a, a bust that like s scares him to death because it doesn't even look because the space marine's not quite human anymore but this is like he describes it as basically a full-on monster it's some kind of creature of pure rage with like fangs and its eyes have rolled back in its head and it's it's just completely monstrous um and and then he hears uh medea coming so he skitters <laughs> off and he's hiding and medea is talking to some dude and she's like he wouldn't listen to me i guess we gotta kill him and he's like what <laughs> the fuck what the f is this bs so he skitters off down into the deep the depths of the space hulk um, and he sees all these people uh, deeper into the ship where the uh, the lights are a lot dimmer and and he gets to a point where like all the the lumens are red and he's deep in the bowels of this ship and the people run and hide and he makes his way to these catacombs and he gets to these catacombs and like the decorations have changed it's still all sculpted but now the stones are like black and it's all like damp and there's some kind of fluid on the ground and he comes to like this dais 
And he's like, what the frick is up with this dais? And he gets up to it, and he finds a body on the dais. And he's like, what the, what the heck? And it's just like the body on the planet. It's what all the frick? juiced. It's, he's been juiced, and there's giant golden chalices, and there's channels running from the body to the chalices, and they fill up with blood. What the heck? And then the space marine with the the eye in the flame catches him, and he's like, "Hey, you're not supposed to be here." here. And and Caltenia's like, "The Primarch said I could do what I want." Uh, And then Caltenia gets basically (laughs) drugged to another chamber and thrown into a chair. And uh, then he has a conversation with Sanguinius, and Sanguinius is like. Yeah, I didn't want you to see that because it's kind of it's kind of screwed up. It's private. It is what it is. <laughs> Kelton is like, so you guys aren't fixed, and and he's like, well, no, it's kind of hard to fix something that's coded in your DNA, but I'm working on it. And after after we help our dad with this crusade, you know, we'll we'll be a okay. I'll have all the time to to do it. And Caltenia, like, he has this weird feeling, like, that something bad's gonna happen. And he's he starts begging Sanguinius to go back to Ball and just say, screw the crusade and, like, fix their gene seed. And Sanguinius is like, but that's not, like, what we're made for, bro. Besides, like, the, you, you can't, like, you can't always prove that these premonitions are gonna come true the only way to know whether or not it's real is to 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 challenge it openly and Caltenia's like well I guess you are a Primarch I guess you know something about that um and yeah they have that conversation it's it's chill he doesn't get eaten like he thought he was going to um Medea finds him later on and she's pissed at him for writing the book that he wrote and he's like fuck you I did what I was told Medea um and then we get a prologue and the prologue is about a uh, a surf going to the depths of uh imperial records and uh finding finding a chest with a thing in it and he brings it back to this person and and the person's Medea, and this is after the heresy, and she's like, "Cool, glad we got the last copy of this book. Sure would sure would hate it if Imperial citizens were to know the truth about anything." And then she's <laughs> like, "I wonder if I should keep it. That'd be pretty cool." And then she's like, "No, I'm gonna burn it anyways." And uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Oh, and she admits that she she killed Katenya. Like some oh, time she? ago, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh right, I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. It, admittedly, a while ago. It sounded like it's been a while. Like years. It's been by a that while. Point. Yeah. 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 And like she was talking a lot about how like the the imperial. So there's the imperial truth, which is uh, humans should be the dominant species in the the universe. Um. And then there's the Imperial Creed, which she helped orchestrate, which is that the Primarchs and the Emperor are all gods, and they should be worshipped like gods. And she's talking about how, like, she doesn't necessarily believe that, but to um, to control the masses, she she's had to make it to be true, effectively, through propaganda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and us. Also- Kind of Sorry. the source of her like pestering mm-hmm. Cartenia early on, like yeah. some early form of that idea that it doesn't necessarily like the truth does not necessarily matter. It's kind of just <clears throat> what things look like and what people interpret them as. She's like her. She has a whole spiel about how she's like, okay, we need sexy pictures of Sanguinius to get people to the factories. That's all we give a shit about. We don't care about this truth. Or the reality of the situation. We just need people to make guns and bullets for a never-ending war machine. <laughs> yep. That's pretty yeah. much word for word what she says. I need... But I also, what I also think is uh, you find neat about the Warhammer universe is 
uh, because they've basically made the Lacticio Divinatus to control the people, make them believe that the Emperor and all the Primarchs are gods, they've kind of inadvertently literally made them gods, because in Warhammer, if you can get enough people to believe a thing, it can kind of come true. Like, uh, Santa Claus. There is literally a Santa somewhere in the wharf because enough humans believed it at one point. I mean, it wasn't really powerful, because, like, humans almost have no psychic abilities but they're somewhat connected to the warp but if you had like a, a planet what would you say a gestalt con con uh, subconscious type thing yeah because humans have souls in the warp which is like the spirit hell and kind of not hell um they there is an innate power there most people can't tap into it but like psychers can yeah they like either overflow with it or they have enough that they can just do like spells or whatever but it's really dangerous because you can really easily blow your head up if you're not careful hmm. what yeah. would you guys think of it who wants to go first pretty good pretty good i like it a lot i still like uh the conrad kerr's book better but that's just because it's from Conry Kerr's perspective the entire time and him like questioning himself and what he's doing. Man, and also being like completely unhinged. Yeah, but then also being like, No, I was fucking right. Everybody else was a jackass. It's like I might be an asshole, but that doesn't mean I'm wrong. I think... Yeah, and I Oh Oh, you go ahead. I, I think too that uh, that's it's a matter of opinion i think that's a more endearing perspective is like someone like being in their own head and understanding that they're kind of shitty but also like trying to justify why they do the things they do um i think the way that uh this book on sanguinius is written is probably the the better way to have written it because i think uh even though Catania kind of sucks as a character it's a good perspective to understand this part of the world through. Yeah. Um, like, I, I think if we got this book from Sanguinius's perspective, it would have been almost immediately boring, just because, especially at this point, like at this time point, he's kind of pretty firm in his ways and yeah. knows what he's doing. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, and so, like... There could be interesting parts from his perspective because he does have clairvoyance. That's the whole thing that they were hinting at during the entire book is that he can... he can. <clears throat> Conrad saw all the bad futures. Sanguinius sees all the good futures. Um, so, like, it could be interesting from that perspective, but I think you're right, especially to introduce, like the nastier part of the uh, the blood angels like their desire to drink the blood of every living thing that they fight um well, and how jarring that is as like a human being who has never had to think about doing that yeah <laughs> it's it's a little bit easier to make that seem bad when you know other humans don't do that yeah but now this primarch and, and his boys kind of <laughs> <laughs> they have to do some kind of spooky stuff and they're doing it in a pretty morally gray way I don't know it's, it's a little yeah. bit more jarring morally the boys gray. and their white thirst well you know I, I the white gray. thirst they're, they're trying they, they, I th they're, they're, try they're justifying themselves they're not justifying themselves well I guess yeah. I think doing. this book works better as like half space dracula half almost documentary right. about the space marines than yeah. it does like trying to explain a primarch and his motives yeah that's something i, I was like how it's kind of a mystery too like it's a lot of it solving things and like yeah. him kind of stumbling or asking upon information and that's that's something i was going to talk about is like i think conrad's book is a better story but i think this is a better like peak into the into the universe if that makes sense yeah 
and it does very much feel more like a Lovecraft thing where like the big spooky stuff happens almost right at the end and it like instantly ramps up it's not like a slow yeah build to the end yeah it's pretty sick um, i think uh i think like so like i really liked conrad kerr's all around the i think the only things i said i would change about that book was making it longer mm -hmm. uh this one i think was perfectly length perfect length for what it is um i think the I definitely did not like this one as much, but I still, like, finished it pretty easily. I think if there's anything I really disliked about this book is that the type of character that Cautenia was was interesting, but uh, Cautenia was also just really freaking annoying. <laughs> he's <laughs> a journalist. He's always yeah. blubbering about something. Yeah, he's whiny I... about how sick he feels, and then he... He's literally talking about like how he's getting no sleep. He's not eating. He's just Look, doing bitch bad. me too. The fuck? I still then, show up to Walmart eight hours then, a day. Hold on, but then the next, like literally the next paragraph, uh, Wadira shows up and he's like, she's waspish and fragile and stupid and whiny. Like he he hates <laughs> on Wadira so much and like she's kind he's of like a jerk. Poor. Yeah, he's he's so awful about her and like. It's clear that she ha she has to hold like some sort of respect for him because she kind of gets him hired in the first place, but he like shows her like almost zero respect back, even when she shows him one of her paintings. He's just like it's better than the last one, I guess. But well, it's I thought like... the whole thing was like he didn't like it because it wasn't true because it was well, a yeah. fabrication. That's why but he was he... like hey. like not even respecting her art. Like he just like oh it's. He's like, it's better than Garish. the last one. Yeah, it's, 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 it's exactly good, what it I needs. guess. She she can paint. Things, yeah, but I guess. she's not like a blood angel. She can't paint like one of the blood angels. He's like, I've already seen the best there is. Come yeah, on, lady. Be honest. The reason I like him so much is because he's such a bastard man. Like <laughs> he's so like anti antithesis of all like the because normally heroic like um 40k book characters are typically heroic scale yeah. in some way or form and then it's just this fucking dude he's like an old grouchy like author he's like oh back in my day i could write about whatever and the imperial censors are cringe yeah i do like i guess i should say emphasize annoying i it, yeah. did, it definitely did not stop me from I... finishing it or enjoying it I but could, he obnoxious. I, I can I could see that. I could see. And I can't necessarily even say I disagree with you. He is kind of annoying. But that's not to mean he's a, a bad character. He's just an no, annoying I, one. He's actually really well rounded. Like how you know, he'll show maybe like not lack of confidence, but how difficult he finds it to actually like write the things. Mm -hmm. Even though he's clearly, like, well-renowned, even if it's for a bad thing. But then, like, the immediate, like, kind of dogging on someone else that kind of has a higher position than him. I think mm -hmm. it, it's interesting. It is interesting. But it's also just obnoxious, too, that, you know, he calls her waspish and fragile. And then I guess mm. she fucking murders him, too. <laughs> it's oh, very male gazy. <laughs> well, yeah, and you know what? Girl boss. I don't like her, but girl boss. This is also one of the fun things we get to talk about, and is like, is being a fascist <laughs> censor still considered to be a girl boss? Did she effectively wield girl bossing to slaughter uh, critics of the Great Crusade? <laughs> Mudera said, "We didn't break up. He's he he broke. I'm up." <laughs> um. Yeah. It's there was pretty... something else. Hold on. Hold on. Because I, I actually highlighted this book a lot. I made a I made a surprised face. I don't know if you guys can't see it and the folks at oh. home can't see it, but I raised my eyebrows. Okay. I kind of paused. So I highlighted this part where Katenya is talking to Sanguinius that last time. And Sanguinius is basically admitting that they're... Uh, they're little goober monster boys. They're not just, like, cool dudes. 
Um, I highlighted the part where he's talking about the Legion was cursed from the start and in the early years they indulged it. No one schooled them any different, so they acted their curse out, let it dominate them. They satisfied their appetites. Appalling things were done, atrocities that should never have occurred. But who was helping them? And I highlighted that, wrote the note, big Catholic vibes, before I remembered that they, they're literally calling this the AIDS. <laughs> No, um, yeah. angels, and I'm like, you know, yeah. I so I think this guy's heard of Catholicism before. Um, I just posted it in in our in in one of our chats. Um, this is what some of their armor looks like. This is a brand new guy who actually just dropped the day we're recording. Um, brand new guy. Yeah. Well, he's he's a he's a Dante, new model. Dante, Dante. He's a new model for an existing character. Commander Dante, the oldest living that's, space marine. I think that's also a good Warhammer book we need to put on the list for next I, year's Dante's book. I want to read it eventually. It, also, it's really good. I was I want to suggest a Tau book, but all the Tau books blow. So yeah. it's like yeah. Uh, quick, Shakes quick hand in Eldar. About, yeah, quick, quick Fuck aside it. about Warhammer Black Library drama is the author who for a lot of the Tau content we have now doesn't give a shit about the established lore and just makes things up to make the towel look more grimdark and it just makes them look stupid instead and it pisses everyone off. Is that the person who made them operate on ant pheromones? Yep. That's some bullshit. But uh, uh quick aside about the or that or just another quick aside about that. It's like the Tau were cool because they are their grim darkness where they were naive and kind of a rigid caste it's... society. Yeah, because they are such a young species in comparison to everyone else. It was cool because they were naive, and that was what made them interesting in, a, in, in the galaxy of this bullshit. And then it's now just stupid. But yeah, I just all I wanted to say. But yeah, that that we Don could hmm? we can read we can read bad books. I don't mind reading bad books. That's true. I, I don't want I, it's. I don't want to take the psychic damage. I was uh, gonna say fine. I'll do it. We could just we could yeah we could just write our own book, and make it good. <laughs> Damn you, right? I did already but, uh, start a thread for potential books that we'll read next year. It's true. So I already put I already put the Dante one in there, so we don't. Uh, is there any other thoughts? Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about how I like how this book highlights the like satire fascism mm -hmm. of the Imperium. And like it's it's really easy because a lot of the characters are very charming. Even Sanguinius, Sanguinius is incredibly charming. And then you're like, you read about how we slaughtered a um, world of billions because they wouldn't submit to imperial rule, and how they're just like wholesale genocided an alien race because the aliens didn't like that they were on their planet. And everyone's like, just kind of, yeah, we cool with this. This shit's epic, bro. Yeah, and. I, I that's one of the reasons I really like this book is that it's it's pretty clear that the Imperium and and the the Imperial citizens are kind of fucking assholes and it's not good it's not a good thing they're doing. Uh I'm sure there's people out there who have, like missed the point on that and um There's a whole like subset of Warhammer fans that don't get the point. Yeah. How does it feel to be Boo Boo the Fool? Is all I have to say to them. Uh, anything else? Uh, I think, uh, as you said, the like snippet into Warhammer. A part of that is super good. Like how uh, he was really good friends with uh, Horace and like an advisor, and that's supposed like this is very much one of those books that's for Warhammer fans because it's definitely foreshadowing Horus getting Chaos powers killing Sanguinius. Well, but then, Jordy, how did you feel about it being not a Warhammer fan? Did you feel like you gleamed a lot more from the universe as opposed to Conrad? Oh, yeah. Because so, I feel like there's more in here that explains shit. Yeah. In a way, yes. Like, So, I guess I should have mentioned this before. For starters, this one's very well written as well. I think I liked the author of the other one better. I know they're two different authors. I don't mm -hmm. remember names, but I did kind of like how the author of Conrad's book, I like how that was written. This one's written well. It's just not, like, my favorite writing style. Mm -hmm. I like how 
Um, these aren't too difficult to read. They're not, especially if you get into a lot of fantasy, sometimes authors get their own heads up their asses and they're trying to write like Tolkien, who wrote books over a hundred years ago. So uh, I think it was well written. I think in terms of like world building, I guess in a way I kind of understand the universe that this is all set in a little bit better, but it's still like such a, mm -hmm. I feel like it's such a small corner of right. the world. Like I, I could explain to you what this book was about very easily. I couldn't really tell you a lot of the greater context around it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, it's not really trying to do that. So I felt I, like I just lose points. I feel like I enjoyed the way that it, like, took a space marine and the way the author kind of, like, almost showed you what a space marine was without being overbearing. Oh, God, excuse me. Overbearing about it. Mm -hmm. The burp I, think, I definitely about. think seeing a space marine from the facet of just a dude is a much more interesting way to explain what they are. Because yeah. when you read about, like, space marines and their own stuff, they're like, they're God's favorite. They're big boys who kill everything. And from a human perspective, they're like, they're barely human. Um, sentient weapons of war. Active, like, war crimes on the battlefield. Yeah, and I kind I also liked the perspective of this character. It's kind of difficult to, like, wrap around. I feel like if I did understand more Warhammer stuff, it would um, be easier to explain. But the way this character, where he's like, I'm out to tell the truth about stuff. I'm really telling the truth. But he's also, like, still victim to the same mm -hmm. propaganda that yep. he thinks he's telling everyone about. Yep. Um, and again, that's an interesting perspective. I feel like I would have understood it a little bit better uh, if I knew more about the world. But also, I don't know, these books read really well. I intentionally don't google anything about anything when i'm reading these and they're still entertaining so if you don't like That's... warhammer they're still worth the read hell yeah well i think that's probably that's probably about it unless anyone has anything else they want to add any questions comments and concerns where votan book uh are you sure don't you forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Call. You can find me on Twitter at RyRyanRed. What about you guys? Uh, at, at Pajama Jordy. What the hell? What? <laughs> uh, I'm at Phoebe on VHS on Twitter and Twitch. I am uh, Tech Priest Priestess Phoebe. Uh, Caden, what about you? You have anything you want to P P P P P P P P Caden. It's all of those P's. If you don't type all yeah, of them Yeah, it's literally. In, if you don't type all of them in, you're not gonna find the right one. Uh we're also reading this month um Alpharius, uh Head of the Hydra, so keep your eyes peeled, not literally, for that episode. And then next month we are reading another book, and that book that we are reading next month is the princess bride oh yeah William i was i was about to say that i was just doing a bit i knew what it was i was just doing sure. a bit <laughs> sure sure so so be sure to stay tuned for that one because i think it's gonna be fun i think i'm gonna rewatch the movie before we record it too me too that movie's epic it is a good I think my letterbox review of it is just it's good thumbs up emoji <laughs> All right, that's about it. But uh, do 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 do. Subscribe. Outro. Darkness, then redness, then whiteness.